5,200 amps about here. So we've been drawing <clears throat> when the brushes have warmed up and the resistance has come down on the order of four or 5,000 amperes, close to 6,000 at one point from this machine, at about 1.05 volts. Now, when we withdraw 5,000 amperes at uh, one volt, that's five kilowatts of electrical power. Now, in order for a normal generator to give you five kilowatts of electrical power, much more than five kilowatts of mechanical energy, in addition, have to go into the normal generator. Now, what we were watching when we were observing this machine when it was running was we were putting the knife switch on the top of the machine on and off into contact and turning off this gigantic current of 5,000 amperes at one volt on and off. And we were looking at the drive motor current, which was around 15 amperes, and how much it increased. And what we observed on the meter was that the increase in the motor current was negligible, or it was a small change, but it wasn't just barely noticeable. Now, normally, in order to supply the amount of mechanical energy to this machine through the belt that would be required to generate that much of power, the meter would have had to go off scale. It would have, the current into this thing would have had to double or triple for a normal generator. And we would have heard things slow down and we would have seen the belt change and everything. But since this machine is liberating its power directly from space, all this motor needs to do is to keep it rotating at constant speed. And any increase in current which we have to the drive motor by virtue of the withdrawal of energy from this machine is through some second order effect which is not related to any kind of a loss mechanism that's presently understood. But even though there is a certain amount of drag, it still means that this machine can produce 20 to 50 times the electrical power output that uh, the mechanical part of the unit has to supply. 20 to 50 times the mechanical input power can be extracted from that machine in electrical power. This one's running around 20 times now. But I'm sure that uh, if we reduce the friction of the brushes and refine the apparatus, we could do even better than this. But in comparison to a normal generator, which only produces 70 or 80 percent of the electrical output with respect to the mechanical input, uh, we're in our improvement factor is like 100 to 1. So this should start a whole new era of development in electrical science. The development of the energy derived from machines of this type, which produce extraordinarily high current set very low voltages. Now, we want to have a little bit of an interview with a man from the Sunburst community who, together with me in the last two years, this is David Eddy of the Sunburst community. He's head of the family. And through his assistance in a world which is so crazy that no, nothing could happen if it didn't right. for something like this, would you care to say a few words? to? For well, historical. Okay, I'll try. It's, <laughs> it's uh, you know, it's our hope that uh, uh, mechanisms such as these can be refined and produced to uh, assist and uh, create an, uh, the possibility of free energy for humanity and to help truly liberate humanity. And we feel that along with the uh, application of, of these types of apparatuses will enable um, the human family to to grow spiritually and to be freed of the fetters that uh, are uh, so uh, frustrating to so many people in you know the world today and without going into any details I'm sure everybody knows what I mean and uh, you know we look forward to the day when man's consciousness of the almighty spirit of that we call God as a living being who pervades the entire universe will be linked with scientific uh, research and development so that all science and development of uh, new inventions and uh, technology will uh, more and more be creative and assistive and positive to the growth of mankind and we can leave behind the uh, the destructive aspect of uh, technology and uh, 
go on, you know, to a greater brotherhood and greater happiness, greater happiness. Fulfillment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yay, yay, yay. So I about all I guess I have all to right. say, you know, we just like to, to help in whatever way we can. Well, we have one more member of our society here. Uh, this is Jeffrey Cook, an electrical engineer, and he wanted to say a few words. He's the man that brought me to Santa Barbara because he saw the first diagram of the end machine in 1977 and said, Bruce, he said, come to Santa Barbara. This is the place to get it started. And uh, he gave me the first uh, broken down loudspeakers I broke up to get the magnets out of to make the first machines. So. Mr. Cook. Well, I just like to talk about, sort of re go over what Bruce said, and paint a little picture of how how this machine actually works and what it does. Okay, basically, a normal generator, the generators that we're, we're normally used to, like the generator in your automobile, the generators that are used in the power plants to generate the electricity that you use in your homes, are also simultaneously motors. In other words, every generator is a motor and every motor is a generator, depending on whether you take current out of it or put mechanical force into it. This is an example of a generator that is not a motor. And basically what went on here was that we extracted 5,000 watts of electricity out of space. The 5,000 watts of electricity did not, did not come from the drive motor. The amount, of, the amount of electrical energy that it took to spin this remained constant, regardless of whether we were taking the 5,000 watts out of the machine or not. And what this means is that it opens a whole new door for the evolution of free energy, of decentralized energy, uh, with just tremendous possibilities. And uh, that's, that's really all I have to say on it. Uh, I, I feel that it's something that's necessary for the continuation of our, of our culture and our society as we know it. I think it's going to reduce the level of, uh, of fear in our agreement to a, a drastic amount. Because when, when there's not enough energy to do things, things slowly just they grind to a halt. And then people start hoarding the energy, and uh, yeah, that's sort of the situation we have now, where if we had an abundant supply of energy that was non-polluting, uh, decentralized, non-controllable, then, then, then it's sort of like oiling the machinery of the, of the system. You know, things can sort of take, get back on the right track again. And uh, I had known Bruce for uh, about 10 years, because we were involved in amplifier design, and uh, I had thought about a machine. I felt that a mach something similar to this would occur, that it was part of the evolution of our thought process. And I had been thinking about this quite strongly because in my own little world, I had noticed that things were becoming harder and harder to do. It was harder and harder to, to do anything. And I felt from really thinking about it that that energy was at the core of the problem. And about a month after I really started thinking about this, I, I got this uh, envelope in the mail, and it was the drawing of the first prototype of the end machine, and I called Bruce on the telephone, and I said, that's a damn good idea. <laughs> and I said, why don't you come out here, and we'll see what we can do with this. And so that's how it happened. Uh, before you close off, I'd like to make that legal statement. All right. Can I make one comment? Go ahead. I'd just like to sort of a little testimonial to the spirit of what's going on here and the fact that it's a, you know, it's a group effort and, and uh, we foresee the future of this involving a group effort and, and working harmoniously. This machine was built um, by members of Sunburst community in a broken down shop with a broken down lathe and a mill that uh, qualified machinists thought uh, should never have been able to produce right, it, and right. and uh, you know it's a testimonial in itself to uh, to the spirit of of uh, of the tremendous desire of 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 I, I, idealists who really feel.